The voice of Radio 1 Just for fun Music Too much so now I'm talking with Miles Gibson of the Panty Liners, the early 70s band that a lot of people will tell you invented proto-punk, influenced The Clash and The Sex Pistols, released two classic albums, Pillow Biter and The Phenomenal Trouser Snake, and then self-destructed before they had time to mature their potential. Is that a fair summary, Miles? Yeah, I don't know. It, it was a mad time. A uh, lot of stuff happened. We was just making it up as we went along. It was do it self music. That's how we saw it. So who were your influences, Miles? Ah, uh, well, we were listening to a lot of early R&B and, and rock, reggae uh, and rockabilly. And later there was uh, oh, Johnny Gippo and the Well Old Dogs, uh, Ball Babies, Jilly Fingers, uh, the Griffins. We listened to whatever. I wrote Ruby Fruit and Blue Vein Teaser while I was living at home in Peckham. Both tracks featured on Trouser Snake. Yeah, it is our breakthrough album. I wrote, I wrote all the tracks on Pillar Biter, but Snake is our, it's how we're remembered. It was huge, wasn't it, Miles? Yeah, ha, <laughs> the BBC banned it. Well, it didn't seem to do you much harm. Nah, we was proud of that. It's like a badge of honour for us, and they were irrelevant, really. Uh, it was enough commercial stations going, so we got the airtime and went ballistic. Band of the Year at Slingshot Music Awards, straight up the American charts. And then, Miles, just when you must have thought you had everything, it all changed for you, didn't it? You mean after Wayne? Wayne Strutt, the guitarist. Yeah, Wayne died of a drug overdose in 75, you know. Uh, after that, Eddie... Eddie Perkins on drums. Yeah... Eddie took his own life, hanged himself, uh, really the same year. With a lawnmower cord, wasn't it? Yeah, well, it, it was a fly mow. So, so anyway, it is obvious we were, we was finished and then Billy was, well, you know, you know what happened. That was just a few months ago. Billy Grunter on bass, shot earlier this year in what police believe was a drugs dispute. Such a tragedy, Miles. Yeah, it was a waste, you know, all of it. First Wayne, and then Eddie, and then Billy. He was trying to get clean. He told me he wanted, he wanted to get into rehab. Do you think the band would have continued if you hadn't been struck down with so much tragedy? Now, I think we came in before our time and we went out the same way, really, you know. I think, you know, stuff happens like that. Any regrets? Yeah, we never made the cover of Rolling Stone. Is that it? That's all, really. You could have carved out a solo career for yourself when the panty liners broke apart. Spunky Wilkson is still my producer. Uh, he'll talk to the wall back with Slingshot Records. But you haven't been tempted? Nah, I never really liked performing, you know. I was happy at composing, and now nah, I, I just want to pursue me writing. So you're still writing songs, Miles? Songs? Nah, not songs, man. I'm writing a book. A book, really? So what is it about? Is it the autobiography? Nah, I mean it's a proper book. I've already got a title. I'm calling it The Sandman. I've been thinking about it a lot lately. It takes me about three months to write an album, so I reckon I can write eight books really in two years. Eight books and then retire. Okay, well good luck with that, Miles, and thanks for coming in. Sure. So now we're coming up to the top of the hour and the latest news headlines. But stay tuned, because when we come back, I'll be playing Dead Men Calling to kick off a whole half hour of Panty Liners Classics. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 